Good evening to those bored enough to watch. On the 23rd of June 2024, the second version of the Friday Night Funk and Soft mod released. I hadn't really known much about it prior to that point, and I played it for the first time completely unbeknownst to any of its contents. I first discovered it entirely coincidentally, only really indulging in the entirety of that experience out of curiosity and wanting to see where it would lead me. This curiosity led to me eventually wanting to play the first version of the mod. It's a modest experience, mostly consisting of songs from the base game with sprites and backgrounds overhauled to fit the narrative it's attempting to tell. Now we come to the second version of the mod, where the UI, menus and sprites are completely remastered alongside the songs with a lot more added content to fit the experience. I'm very glad I was able to experience this mod, as despite all of the criticisms I'll be sharing in this video, this is a mod that I'm fond of. This leads me to today, where I want to discuss everything I liked, everything I disliked and overall make comparisons between the two versions of the mod where I feel such a thing is necessary. So with that said, let's discuss Friday Night Funkin' Soft. The story begins in media res. Benjamin and Pico are fleeing from the Ferrists, of whom are the parents of the former. They stop in an alleyway and decide to have a duet in preparation for a possible confrontation between themselves and their pursuers. When they're finished, they both hear footsteps, of which is belonging to Father Ferrist. He's here in hopes of taking Benjamin home, which is dependent on whether he wins a rap battle that they're about to engage in. When Benjamin wins all three songs, Father Ferris tries to resort to some sort of physical violence in hopes of forcefully achieving his goal. Pico intervenes and sprays him, of which the pair uses an opportunity to flee from the alleyway. They seek shelter in an abandoned mansion, where they're confronted by the spooky kids. They recognize Benjamin due to posters of his face around town and his relation to his parents. A rap battle ensues. I really like the detail of Benjamin doing the spooky dance in this version of the mod, as it wasn't in the original. It would have been funny if Pico started doing it too, but I suppose that wouldn't really fit the narrative. Either way, all fun ends here when Benjamin awakes in an empty room where he only has this gentleman for company. I do want to talk about Monster later in this video when he's more relevant, so for now, after the duet between the two ensues, Benjamin awakes to a worried Pico. He mentions that the children caught a ride from a fellow in a white van, but that's not really important. Initially, Benjamin insists on trying to leave the mansion, but when lightning strikes, he quickly changes his mind. Chapter 3 is probably one of the biggest highlights of the mod. After checking out of the mansion, the duo eagerly wait for a train. Pico in particular is rather restless and isn't keen on being set back any further. Luckily for him, Grace arrives. She notices Benjamin and after a brief introduction, she insists upon a duet with Benjamin. In the original version of this mod, this was one of the only chapters in that version with songs of its own, and for this version, they're all remastered beautifully. Not only are the songs great, but the edited expressions and the sprites emphasize the tense feelings present in this chapter, which suits Grace's gradual loss of tranquility and general happiness to see Benjamin. This is a result of him making it more and more clearer that he isn't interested in returning, as he points out the moral quarrels with their situation. In the original version of the mod, Grace talks about Pico specifically during her mental breakdown, which involves guns and schools, and if I just said the term, this video would probably get age-restricted. I was originally ready to discuss that further and why bringing it up in the slightest isn't a good idea. Narratively, it brings up a lot of questions that I don't think the mod has answers for. I won't dwell on it much, as ultimately and understandably, those aspects of the dialogue don't make a reappearance in the current version. I bring this up because with this removed bit of dialogue, a crucial detail about Grace's and Benjamin's background is removed with it, in my opinion. That being that both of them were privately tutored. Grace is presented as someone who is overly sheltered by her parents and fed a false reality regarding her future. This is the case for Benjamin as well, who supposedly breaks out of this reality with the help of Pico. This false reality agonizingly shatters for Grace, bit by bit. This results in herself breaking down in tears at the end. With the detail of them not being around people very much aside from their own parents, it makes a lot more sense as to how Grace managed to live in that reality for so long, because until this chapter, she never had anyone to snap her out of it, and supposedly she's left to try and pick up whatever pieces she can on her own, as in Benjamin's attempts to comfort her, both himself and Pico are swept away by the inhabitants of a white limo, specifically that of Mother Marist. In her attempts at trying to bring Benjamin home, she becomes more and more irritated at his constant refusals, initially presenting herself as a kind and bubbly personality but gradually shows more of her true character. Pico intervenes after the third song and commands his partner to jump off the limo and into his arms. I really like the animated cutscene here. It adds a lot more tension to the scene as in the original version of the mod, the chapter just ended up abruptly after he's commanded to jump. A month after the events of the fourth chapter, Pico and Benjamin finally enjoy the festivities together after spending a month in recovery. Though they're quickly interrupted by the fairest couple, want to re-attempt their efforts to bring Benjamin home, and this time Time, it'll be a joint effort. After the first song, Benjamin has finally had enough, and for what seems to be the first time, speaks his true mind to his parents. With a newfound invigoration and sense of hope, the second song plays, but this time, he's not trying to survive, he's trying to win. This is made clear through details such as him constantly interjecting his own singing even when the couple are having their turn. In the original version of the mod, Grace was visible in the background during this chapter. In the first song, she looked upset, seemingly at the sight of Benjamin. But when he gives his spiel about parenthood and what that means, her expression changes to what appears to be a sense of 
of realization. In the third chapter, Benjamin couldn't finish his efforts to comfort and speak some sense into her. So I often like to think that what he says here outright snaps her out of her false reality she'd been living in. This is a detail that unfortunately doesn't make a reappearance in the second version of the mod, and if anything, would have fit here more than ever, especially with what we're about to see happen after this chapter. Ultimately though, when this song ends, Benjamin finds himself alone, once again with this gentleman here for company. From what I can interpret, the monster is assumedly supposed to represent Benjamin's mental perception of his parents. This can be seen through details in the design of his character, such as him wearing the same shirt and having the same coloured hair as Father Fairest. Benjamin overcoming what is implied to essentially be an inner demon that's been tormenting him for what's implied to be a long time is the note this family feud ends on, and it doesn't work for me. In order to explain why, I first need to discuss a few things. Namely, the first being the actual structure of the original Friday Night Funkin' experience that this mod bases its own structure off. The base game is incomplete, and nothing suggests that more than the current story and the weeks in the game. In between a lot of the weeks, there's a lot of missing context with the locations constantly switching abruptly with no real explanation presented in the game itself. Obviously, these gaps are said to be filled in the final game, and with that in mind, what we currently have is an incomplete foundation for a story. Friday Night Funkin' Soft tries to use this incomplete foundation to tell a narratively and thematically complex story. In some areas, it works well, specifically in areas where the mod diverts from the structure and implements its own narrative devices. However, for the most part, it just replaces the weeks in Friday Night Funkin' with its own chapters, and this can be seen by this individual being replaced by the monster in week 2 and week 5. In the base game, this works, but in this mod where he plays an essential role to the story and even serves as the finale, it doesn't for a number of reasons, the main one being because his nature isn't fully established because of how little screen time and mentions he gets. For example, after the initial confrontation in chapter 2, he's never mentioned again until he appears in the finale, and that doesn't align with the fact that he's supposed to have visited Benjamin frequently. I really think that if the mod diverted from trying to follow the base game structure and developed one of its own where such oversights would theoretically be avoided, I think that it would allow for this game's finale to have more of an impact. In media res is a tricky thing to execute in a story, as the game has to ensure that context is eventually given to the player for them to understand what's going on. Most games tend to do this by starting on a point that will interest the player and then using the beginning to give them the context that led to what's seen at the beginning. This mod doesn't do that. Instead, it tries to give context as the story is playing out, which often results in no context being given at all. We don't know details such as the events that led to Benjamin running away with Pico or how they even met, and I can't be invested in a story of this nature when such crucial context is missing just because the mod said so. And so, for that reason, this finale doesn't work for me. There's too many missing gaps, too many things left unclear and not enough screen time for the finale's main subject. When the confrontation ends, Benjamin embraces Pico. No one, not even the crowd, knows what happened to the fairest couple, except Pico. And so, with that, the fairest feud is over. After the previous chapter, Pico and Benjamin meet Grace and her new partner, Sven, at the park. Though, he's not very fond of Benjamin, and so after an awkward interaction, a rap battle ensues. I really like the detail of other characters being visible in the background during this chapter, as it's a nice bit of world building. With that aside, tensions escalate more and more as the chapter goes on. Pico is unsettled by Sven's attitude, which leads to Grace and Benjamin trying to de-escalate the meeting. Ultimately, Benjamin loses in the third song, seemingly as a result of a sore throat which leads to Sven and Grace taking their leave because her parents think she's at the library. So, while one pair takes their leave, the other decide to have a day out of their own. I think that this conclusion leaves a lot to be desired, particularly with Grace. While she does come to the conclusion that she wants to live a life of her own, the mod doesn't seem to address the very obvious conflict that'll ensue between herself and her parents, as it's alluded that they're mostly similar to Benjamin's. Will she run away with Sven like Benjamin did with Pico? We're not really given any answers regarding her future. In a way, I think it sets up a story of her own, as she tries to navigate through her newfound epiphany. But with that aside, we finally reach the end of this story. Pico and Benjamin stare out into the stars and share a duet, and so with that in mind, the mod reaches its end. While that is the end of the story, there is a bit more to see as side content. Namely, three extra songs are playable in the free play menu after finishing the story. Promise, Rolling Girl, and Lag Train. While I think that these are all really good, I personally find Rolling Girl to be my favourite. In the original version of the mod, there was another week where Benjamin has a dream that consists of himself meeting boyfriend and girlfriend from the base game. Benjamin originally mistakes boyfriend to be a manifestation of everything he was envisioned to be by his parents before realising that isn't the case. While it isn't much, I would have liked to see this week make somewhat of a return in this second version of the mod. It's a good bit of character the building for Benjamin and definitely doesn't deserve to be left behind. Furthermore, it also serves as a bit of a prologue to chapter 6, as it occurs the night before it takes place. Regardless of its presence, I think that there is a lot of replay value in this mod, as things such as the ranking system give incentive to replay the songs of perfect your performance. Though it would have been better if your ranking was saved and displayed somewhere, as to my knowledge, it isn't. Either way, there is a lot of extra content to engage in with this mod and I really enjoyed my time with it. 
I believe I've said everything I want to say about this mod. It's not perfect by any means. I hope my critiques in this video regarding things such as the narrative shortcomings concerning the story this mod tries to tell shows that. However, I believe this mod is amazing regardless. Throughout everything I engaged in when I played this mod, I believe the amount of work and dedication put into this mod is visible. Despite all the narrative shortcomings, I enjoyed my time with Friday Night Funkin' Soft. And on that note, I absolutely would recommend that you play it. So, there's the video, I hope you all enjoyed it. I've been wanting to make this video since the mod released, and I hope that it doesn't cause any stress to anyone involved with it. Just remember that everything I say in these videos is entirely my own opinion, and you're free to disagree with me. If you want to view the list of games I want to make videos about in the future, you can always do so through the link in the description. Additionally, if you want to follow me, then my socials would be linked in the description, as well as any afterthoughts or messages I may want to add. With that, I haven't really got much else I want to say, so I'll see you all in my next video. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I wish you all a very pleasant evening.